Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Can everybody take their seat, please? We're about to get started. My name is Javier Neira. I am the board chair for the Oklahoma Virtuosi Chamber Orchestra. It is my pleasure to welcome you guys. And without further ado, we're going to keep the program very nice and short. I'd like to introduce the, or welcome, the Oklahoma Virtuosi Chamber Orchestra to the States. Let's give them a round of applause, please.
Good afternoon. Uh, really great to see everyone here. Thank you very much to, for coming to our second season, fifth season, second concert of the season called Art Matters. Uh, my name is Thomas Jemba and I'm the executive director and the music director of the Oklahoma Virtuosi and this amazing musicians right here. Uh, the first piece we just played uh, was a piece by Russell Peck, Signs of Life 2. Um, this piece actually was composed first in 1995 uh, and it was titled actually Don't Treat On Me and it gained a lot of popularity and then um, he was, uh, Mr. Peck was asked by the Boston Symphony to actually write a three movement piece and he wrote another second and a third movement which was very very jazzy and kind of stylish and everything like that and he was thinking about the opening movement so he basically took this piece called Don't Treat On Me and he implied it into the three movement piece called Signs of Life 2. So uh, that, was the, that was the very first uh, movement of that. High energy, really exciting, uh, great opening piece. Hope you enjoyed it. Okay, uh, today we have a really uh, incredibly exciting program for everyone. Um, and uh, next piece, next piece, actually the next thing we're going to do is something that has been on my mind for a very long time. Um, uh, since five years ago when we created Oklahoma Virtuosi. Um, I'm a big believer in the history. I really believe that everybody is supposed to, should know about the history of the city, of the place, of the state, of the country. It matters, I think, for us to grow as a good tree with the good leaves. We need to know where our roots are from. Uh, and uh, today we're going to begin something that I would like to do once a year and uh, we're going to begin a Lifetime Achievement Award to musicians who have done something really significant uh, for the city, for the state. Uh, because we don't, some, I feel like sometimes we don't talk about it and there is a lot of really wonderful people that I'm hearing about that has done something really major, important. And this is why we're here. This is why we have young musicians because of these people here. And uh, today we're going to award uh, this Lifetime Achievement Award to Mr. Herbert W. Bagwell. Uh, we're going to see some pictures displayed behind me, so you're welcome to take a look at those, paint, those pictures as well as I'm talking to him. I'm going to give you a little bit of the introduction about Mr. Bagwell. Um, Mr. Bagwell was born in Billings, Oklahoma on September 30th, 1909, but lived most of his life in Oklahoma City. He is uh, widely known as a violin professor, performer, and a visionary in music education. In 1929, at the age of 19, he became a chairman of the String Instrumental Department at Oklahoma State University and held this position for 52 years. He is highly respected by his many fine students who represent him as music teachers, professional performers, and symphony members throughout the world. He was a charter member of the Oklahoma City Philharmonics. He served in South Pacific Theater as a mem member uh, of a special service unit during the World War II. The first string instrumental program in the Oklahoma City school system was established because of Mr. Bagwell's vision. He organized the first annual elementary string instrument concert hosted by at Oklahoma State University, assisted by OCU Orchestra. This group consisted of 500 selected uh, students performing solo ensembles and string orchestra music. To further promote uh, music in Oklahoma in 1943, he founded and directed a performance uh, ensemble known as the Gypsies, uh, consisting of strings, vocalists, and dancers performed throughout Oklahoma and across the United States. This group performed a mixture of Latin dance melodies, American hit gypsy music, as well as some of the classical works too. To make the group even more exciting, the group wore costumes, as you can see on the pictures. Uh, all costumes were made by Peggy Bagwell, which was actually his wife, and were crafted from skills and fine materials that were ordered all the way from Hollywood. I have heard rumors that actually in, during that time, each costume was worth around $1,000. So you can imagine those days, the price. Mr. Bagwell is well known as a collector and specialist in string instruments. In 1956, he established the Intercity Violin Studios for sale, rental, and repair. In there, he developed new and innovative technique for marketing and instrumental repair. And until these days, he, his family successfully continues the operation on this very precious, his very precious business. 
And actually, we have a very special guest over here to, who's going to take this award from us. It's actually a daughter of Mr. Bagwell. It's Dina Bagwell. Can I call you here for a minute? Dina. <laughs> Dina didn't know, actually, this is going to be happening today. <laughs> And I want, uh, Dina, with this award, I just want to tell you how much we appreciate for everything that you've done, has done for the city. And uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the concert. The music is for him. The next piece we're going to perform for you is a piece by Van Williams, Ralph Van Williams. He's an English composer, uh, titled Fantasia on a Theme by Thomas Tales. I encourage each one of you to really uh, take the programs home and read the program notes. They're really good. It's always a nice thing to wrap up in the morning tomorrow as you're drinking your coffee. Think about, hey, I just went to this concert. I wonder what they wrote over there. It's good. I do that. <laughs> um, he was an English composer uh, who lived in years 1872 to 1958, so First and Second World War times, more or less. Uh, and he composed that piece in 1910, so he was in his 40s, more or less. And uh, the theme, um, the main melody on this piece was actually is based, it was composed by the 16th century English composer Thomas Tales. And uh, so he basically heard that theme that you hear at the very beginning, um, by us being played, and he started developing and using it in many different ways and many different motions. Um, but this is a very special performance. Actually, the orchestra divides into the two orchestras. There's Orchestra One and Orchestra Two. Orchestra One is going to stay right here on the stage, and Orchestra Two, as you can see, is ready to go on the on the risers over there. And then uh, in the Orchestra Two, I'm really, really excited to have a privilege to introduce to you a string quartet from Oklahoma Youth Orchestras. Those are uh, students from this really amazing organization here in town. Please, can you lift your hand, the quartet? So everybody just lift your hand up, like up there, yeah. They are right there, and they are really incredibly amazing. And uh, I would like to ask, if possible, the music director, Jeff Grogan, to say a few words about the uh, Oklahoma Youth Orchestras. Thank you, Tomas. Good evening. Good afternoon. My name is Jeff Grogan, and I serve as artistic director and conductor of the Oklahoma Youth Orchestras. And thank you for coming up with this idea. Test. There we go. Thank you for coming up with this idea. It's such a great experience for Alexander, Laura, uh, Jordan, and Sophie to be able to be a part of this piece in particular because this is a game changer in your musical life. The first time you hear this piece, and then you never forget the first time you play it. It's just one of those kind of pieces. The Oklahoma Youth Orchestra serves over 300 students. Some of them come from as far as two hours away every week on Mondays. And uh, we have many different orchestras, and these four serve in Oklahoma Youth Orchestras. But Tomas, thank you so much for this opportunity. I appreciate you all. And that this beautiful organization thrives in Oklahoma City. So thank you all. Well, without further ado, here is uh, Van Williams' Fantasia.
Oklahoma Youth Orchestra String Quartet. All I want to say, welcome to the string world after this piece. That's what we love, that's what we are all about. Well, this is the intermission time. Um, please take, take your time and I will see you in around 10, 15 minutes. Well, hello again. Um, welcome to the second half. And now we are um, at the peak of the concert, Art Matters. Well, the peak was before too, so we are picking every piece today. Uh, the next piece we're going to play is a piece by Bella Barto called Divertimento. Actually, I want to tell you for a second the no, the, what Divertimento really means, because sometimes we hear sonata, concerto. Divertimento is a very simple thing which composers are supposed to write a music that musicians enjoy and also audience really enjoy. That's one of those things where the agenda for the, for the composer was, I really make sure that whenever I compose, wherever I compose, the audience really enjoys it too, and the orchestra. So it's like, there's supposed to be a really big connection between us and you guys. And this place is really perfect for that. Um, this divertimento is actually represents the very early stages of abstract. So, uh, when you just walk out of the theater theater and you go into the gallery, there is actually an abstract remix right there that actually you, you're more than welcome to combine whatever you hear right now for the next 25 minutes with what you will see over there. And it's going to probably make a lot of sense to you. Overall, Oklahoma Contemporary has a lot of wonderful ex exhibitions here and I encourage each one of you to come back and visit because this place is really incredible. Um, Bela Bartok was a Hungarian composer um, and um, he composed this piece in 1939, as you can imagine, that's right before the beginning of the Second World War, uh, which means that's a last piece that he composed before actually uh, leaving uh, Hungary and moving to the United States, because that was the place where a lot of Europeans felt it was a safe ground. So um, he left here and then Divertimento was pretty much uh, performed um, in Europe but without him being there. It has three movements. Uh, first movement is in the waltz, kind of with the specific kind of gypsy influences in it. Second, slow and dark music. Third, a quick dance-like in a rondo form. This music is going to make you feel like, hey, you're getting it? Yes, oh yes, I'm, he I'm hearing this tonal, it's great, it's dense, you know, and then all of a sudden it's gone. It disappears into something else and then comes back again. So you're going to have a lot of moments where you feel like, I'm getting it, and then you don't. But he wants that. <laughs> He's going to really confuse you. <laughs> um, well, um, we have a very special guest artist for tonight um, who is going to collaborate with us on something that uh, this is the first time for Oklahoma Virtuosi to do. He's going to do live, live painting, live drawing. Uh, and his name is DG. <laughs> we have two strings on the instruments called D and G. So I thought we'd play it to him. <laughs> From now on, that's his melody, DG. <laughs> um, DG uh, Smiling, he's an Oklahoma Chakta native artist who is best known for his one-line continuous drawing technique in which his pen never leaves the paper until the image is complete. Uh, DG is going to draw during the performance every musician, so there's going to be 20 drawings during the performance. And then um, after the performance, uh, we're going to take those drawings really quickly down to the first floor on the entrance, and they're going to be displayed, which on the way out, uh, you'll be able to see it and enjoy it. And they will be also um, available um, um, as benefit for donations. So if any of you is interested in getting a whole collection, that would be great, or maybe individually. <laughs> uh, you will have all of the information over there. Um, so uh, really please make sure that you go over there. But after we are done, Bartok, don't leave. Just give me a second. I want to say you some little bit few words about, about things, but the drawings are going to go down there to be prepared. So uh, I would like to DG to say a few words. Actually, DG has spent six years in Hungary, five years. 
in Budapest. And uh, when we started to talk about this and talking about playing a Hungarian music Bartok here in Oklahoma, he we knew that this is this is like this is the thing. He he is actually much bigger specialist about Hungarians and, and Bartok than I am. So I'm going to give him a microphone for a second and then we're going to play Bartok. So I'm really excited. I was working in defense work during the Balkan Wars, and five of those I was stationed in and out of Budapest, or Budapest. And Bartok Bela is a very formidable character in the Magyar, or Hungarian, concerts and psyche of the end of the 19th and 20, beginning in mid 20th century. But as the fall of the Iron Wall happened, he became a lightning rod amongst those who were Federalists. And this is important. He's birthed in the Austro-Hungarian Empire in Transylvania. As he's, you know, going into his 30s and such, he, you know, we have the, world, the First World War. And he sees the dissembling of everything that was normal to him. His Transylvania is gone. It's now Romania and it's now Serbia. You have all these things divided. And he becomes a lightning rod. He is not political overtly, but he is politically, artistically. And it's important to note this, that in the time of the rise of the right, and the time of the rise of the fascist, he embraced the Roma or the Gypsy. He embraced this whole pan-identity around him because he was as much a a musicologist, an ethnomusicologist, as he was a composer. I mean, his, his research went to Algeria, went to all over, to Turkey. And so his work was about humanity. And so when you listen to his work, when you accept his work, you accept something that is human, that he's looking into the eyes of those who want to say that there is a one way of doing same one thing, and he goes, no, it's not. And so when you're thinking about abstract, when you think about how you're, it may seem disjointed, he's saying that's actually life. Life is not predictable. But we have these passions, we have these rhythms, and we must not force ourselves to go against it, but surf it, run with it, play with it. And so when this was written, he was right at a point in which he had no option but to leave the Reich the Third Reich and those who were fascists in Hungary were going to make it very difficult on his life. And so he came to the United States. And it was a very difficult last six years for him because he died six years later after this. And so this is a precious piece because in Hungary, those who came back, this, was, this resurgent of Bartok Bela's work symbolized the possibility of something that was more centrist. And whether or not that's happened, that's not us to, you know, up to our debate tonight. But it's a passionate piece. And so I'm just glad to be here to be able to do it. With them.
I'm going to say it again, Oklahoma Virtuosi Chamber Orchestra. Um, so here, now we're going to uh, be taking the art downstairs, so you can enjoy it just in a minute. But before uh, that, uh, we have a little surprise. One more. I know all the surprises tonight. Christmas is coming up. Um, I wanted to actually thank a couple of people that this wouldn't be possible without them. Definitely our funding donors, uh, Dig and Glenna Tannenbaum. Truly appreciate that. We would like to thank also our partnership uh, uh, organization, Oklahoma Contemporary, right here, which uh, they are making us really feel again like at home. This is our second time we're playing here, and it's just we are having a blast. Um, and um, as you all know, on the way out, there is a little bag, so you're welcome to donate. Uh, we take checks. Um, there, is, uh, there is an insert inside of your program. You're welcome to mail donation or go to our website, anything like this. Uh, always every donation is uh, really great. Um, we, we truly appreciate that. Um, just please remember that we have uh, concerts coming up on December 12th, Holidays with Ofco. Um, uh, February 13th, Love is a Game. We're going to have, we're going to collaborate with um, um, Oklahoma Contemporary Dance um, from Edmond, um, Perpetual Motion. This is going to be quite incredible. And as you know, every concert with us is something special and very different. Uh, then in April, we're going to play music by Oklahoma composers. That's going to be on April 24th. Uh, and then the finale on May 15th, titled Viva Vivaldi. We're going to play music by Vivaldi, uh, Four Seasons, but it's going to be recomposed. It can be better. It's like 21st century Vivaldi. <laughs> you will love it. Um, anyway, uh, thank you all very much. And uh, stay, stay on your seats. We're not done. There's a gift coming up. And then uh, I hope looking forward to seeing you, you all downstairs uh, by, the, by the art right there. <laughs> 